everyone, welcome back. So glad you're joining us again. I wanted to talk just a minute with you about good. You know, sometimes when we say, oh, that's good, our good means, eh, maybe on a scale of knees to head, good might be about our waist or maybe lower because we have such fun words like awesome and epic and all of those words. But you know what? When the Bible says God is good, it's beyond awesome, it's beyond epic, it's beyond every single word way up here. It's not just good like we think about good. All right, let's get started with a fun song and a high five for your crew leaders. Here we go. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with another This or That Challenge with my buddy Drew, learning about rhinoceroses. We're gonna try to remember something we may have never known or we do know about rhinos. Are you ready? Okay, this time we're gonna vote by pointing at your eyes or your nose. Do rhinos have better eyesight or better sniffers? Can they smell better? or see better. Sniff, you think they have good noses? Let's think. <gasps> ding, 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 ding. They have good sniffers. Good job. Thanks, Bible buddy. Your friend Mac is back. 
and I've got something to tell you. You probably didn't know this, but we rhinos have poor eyesight. I want you to know so if I'm walking down the street and I don't wave at you, you'll know why. It's not that I don't like you, it's that I probably didn't see you. Out here on the plains in Eastern and Southern Africa, not being able to see well isn't all that big of a deal. There's not much to run into. It would probably be a different story where you live. Some scientists say we rhinos can't see anything more than 15 feet in front of us. I'm not sure exactly how far I can see, but it's not far. Then everything gets fuzzy. I'll show you. Do you see that tree over there? You're seeing it like most people see it. But if you were a rhino, yep, it'd be that fuzzy. But God helped us out by giving us rhinos a great sense of smell. I may not see you coming, but I probably smell you coming. My super sniffer helps me know if something or someone is hanging around. And I can hear well too. So if you crack your knuckles or cough or hiccup, I'll hear you. God was good to us rhinos when he gave us the ability to sniff out danger and hear it coming. It'll help us stay safe. In the Bible, book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. And boy, is that true. Trouble? For me, bugs are trouble. You may think my thick skin is pretty tough, but it's actually kind of sensitive. I hate it when those bugs bite. God gave me these good friends called oxpecker birds. They hang out on my back, eating the bugs that bug me. Hey, thanks guys! In the Bible, God helped a man named Joseph. He didn't send him birds to sit on his back, but he did help Joseph know what people's dreams meant. You can read about it in the book of Genesis in the Bible. It's a real dreamy adventure. And you can see for yourself how God helps you. Just look around. When you're looking at a bully, or you don't do so well on a surprise test. Remember that God is good no matter what, and God will help you. Talk to him, he's never far away. But it's time for my mud bath, so I guess I'll be seeing you. That's all for now. This is Mac saying over and out. Welcome back. All right, it's time for our Bible verse. Just as a reminder, the Bible is made up of an Old and a New Testament. The Old Testament is before Jesus. The New Testament is after Jesus. The Old Testament is full of so many promises, as well as the New Testament, but a lot of them came true in the New Testament that were talked about in the Old Testament. And our Bible verse today is from Nahum which is in the Old Testament. And it goes like this, you guys, repeat after me, do what I do after I do it. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Hands on your hearts. Yes. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. A strong refuge. A strong refuge. When trouble comes. When trouble comes. We're looking for trouble. We don't want trouble, trouble to see trouble. us. Trouble, trouble, trouble. trouble. Okay, trouble, hands trouble. back on our heart. We're gonna do it one more time. Ready? Trouble. Are we ready? Repeat after me. The Lord, the Lord is good. good. The Lord is good. A strong refuge. A strong refuge. When trouble comes. Good job. Thank you.
Welcome back, everyone. We have all of our friends up here, and we've picked a Joseph for today. So Joseph, Joseph, wave at the crowd. Wave at the people at home. Imagine we all live at a place called Egypt, and it's a powerful nation. The king of Egypt is called Pharaoh. See Joseph shaking his head no. Shake your head no. Joseph is trying to tell us that he's not Pharaoh, he's Joseph. But Pharaoh made him second in command, do that. Second in command, so everyone has to listen to what Joseph says to do. But don't take my word for it. Let's see what the Bible says about it. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Okay, Joseph, here we go. We're gonna practice with the people in the town. Are you ready? Everybody watch Joseph. Joseph, would you like them to lift an arm? Yes or no? Lift your arms. Joseph, do you want everyone here to lift their foot? Yes or no? Yes, lift your foot. Whoa. Joseph, do you want everyone here to put their arms down and their legs down? No, not yet? Okay. Joseph, do you want everyone here to do a thumbs up and go back to their seat? Yes. Yes. Okay, back to your seat. So Joseph was in charge. What he said went, but it always wasn't this way. Let's rewind and go back a few years. We're going back to two years earlier and Joseph sitting on the ground looking sad because he's in jail. Big bummer. In fact, they were all in jail. Joseph looks around at his fellow cellmates. He sees Pharaoh's cupbearer. That's the guy who tasted Pharaoh's drinks to make sure no one has poisoned his favorite punch. Is that drink safe there, cupbearer? All right, he survived, so it must have been safe. There was another person in jail too, the Pharaoh's chief baker. See Joseph giving a what's up kind of nod to the baker? Just looking at the baker made Joseph crave cinnamon rolls, so he quickly looked away and looked sad again. Well, now it's nighttime in the jail, so everyone is sleeping. Everybody go to sleep. Pretend to be asleep. Suddenly, the cupbearer and the baker sat straight up in bed. They'd each had a dream. Okay, they're sitting straight up. You guys look a little confused because you just had a dream. The cupbearer and the baker wanted to know what their dreams meant. Let's read about it. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were de de dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials, who were in custody with him in his master's house. Why do you look so sad today? You both had dreams, they answered, but there's no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. Joseph couldn't say what the dreams meant on his own. See how baffled and confused he looks? But he knew God could help him because God is good no matter what. And out of his goodness, God will help us. God helped Joseph interpret both dreams. And here's what the dreams basically were. The cupbearer dreamed that he saw three grapevines and that he squeezed grapes into Pharaoh's cup. Pretend you do that. And the baker, well, he dreamed about balancing three baskets of bread on his head. Then in the dream, the birds came and ate the bread. Those were the two dreams. But with God's help, Joseph knew what they meant. See. Doesn't Joseph look like he knows the answer? Give us a confident face there, Joseph. He's looking confident. Here's what the dreams meant. In three days, the cupbearer would be back to work tasting drinks for Pharaoh, but the baker didn't have such a happily ever after. In three days, he'd not be baking bread. He wouldn't even be alive. Oh dear. Sure enough, what Joseph said came true. Before the cupbearer left the jail, Joseph asked him for a favor. So Joseph looked like you're begging him for a favor. Clutching his hands in front of him and saying, pretty please, and let's read what Joseph asked for. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention to me Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. 
I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. You see, in our story, Joseph hadn't always lived there. Joseph had lived in Egypt, in the land of the Hebrews, but his brothers wanted to get rid of him and he ended up a servant in Egypt. But God was good to him in the good times and the bad. God was with Joseph, helping him and guiding him. God had a plan. Joseph played an important part in it. Okay, let's fast forward a few years and go back and talk about a few more dreamers. Now we're at Pharaoh's house and all the magicians were there and all the wise men, they had come to town. They had all come to town because Pharaoh had had a dream and he wanted somebody to interpret what it meant. Pharaoh asked all these people, he asked this cup bearer, put your cup down please. He asked the magicians, who's our magician? Somebody do a trick. He asked the wise men, so you guys have a think. If you're a wise man, have a think. He asked them all what the dreams meant, and guess what? No, but he knew. Here's what he dreamed about. Pharaoh dreamed about cows. He saw seven healthy cows. Then Pharaoh saw seven scrawny and tiny cows. But guess what? In Pharaoh's dream, the scrawny cows ate the big cows. I bet they were stuffed. Pharaoh woke up, startled, confused, and maybe a little hungry. But then he fell back asleep and kept dreaming. This time he saw have seven heads of grain. Grain is kind of used to make your favorite cereal and bread. In this dream, Pharaoh also saw seven shriveled up heads of grain that ate up the healthy grain. So Pharaoh invited everyone to let them, to ask them what the dreams meant. And none of them knew, like we were discovering before. Nobody had any answers. And then suddenly, the forgetful cupbearer remembered, cupbearer remember something. He had a friend who was in jail. And he said to Pharaoh, hey, my buddy Joseph, he's in jail. You should get him out of jail. Get him over here. I bet he'll know what it means. So Joseph shows up. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt, Egypt will be forgotten, and the famine will ravage, ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God, and God will do it soon. God helped Joseph to interpret Pharaoh's dream. And he got it right. And guess what? Joseph ended up keeping all of the people from dying for seven years because God helped him to know how to handle a famine. Come on now, join with me. Everybody sing. I'm going to lift my voice to glorify my king. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. He's always there for us. He's good in every way. Pouring out his awesome love. He's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy. He's good in every way. He gives us all we need and more. He's good in every way. Come on now, join. Come yeah. on now, join with me. Everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty. Join with me, everybody.
He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. You know, it's easy to see God's goodness when things are going good. It's much harder when things aren't going quite so good. With all of the stuff that's been happening in our world, hard to see that God is good. But you know what? He is good no matter what is happening, and He's always for us. So let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for these families. I thank you for the children. Thank you that they've stepped up to be crew leaders and to just be learning more about you every day. We ask, Lord, that you just bless them right now, no matter what their situation, and help them to know that you are good and you work all things out for their good, no matter what's happening in our lives. Thank you for loving us and being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. Goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. It's time to make my way back home I know Jesus loves me He loves me so Jesus loves me